Hey Nakama, this is Gomu Gomu, it's me, my name is Aldien, or Alden, and today we're going to be getting into episode 1089, entering a new chapter, Luffy and Sabo's Paths. Let's get into this. Now, before I say anything, I just want to thank all the people who have been commenting, uh, the new subscribers, um, it's been very... I'm not going to say crazy because it's 25, but still, like, that's a number I never thought I'd get to. So the next next goal is 50. I know in one of my other videos, I said I want to get to 1,000 by the end of this, by the end of 2024, which is obviously a dream. So hopefully we can achieve it together. But if not, we keep pushing. Anyways, okay, back to the real shit. By the way, follow me on TikTok at, go, at Gomu Gomu It's Me. I'm going to start posting skits. I got a couple ideas. I just got to get some time to record them, but they're coming. Anyways, so let's get into this episode, right? So there was a new in intro, right? The animation is sick. The music, it's good, but, you know, I think one of my f personal favorites will always forever be the one I'm dreaming on. Dreaming no, yeah, whatever. Um, it's very cartoony, and we see a lot of characters we haven't seen before, right? And then we also see that the uh, Straw Hats got a whole bunch of new outfits, so, you know, that's one thing I like about um, One Piece is, like, it doesn't take a movie for them to get new uh, outfits. It's whatever, you know, whatever, like, new, you know, arc or saga or whatever, they'll have a new, brand new outfit. So, I like that. Anyway, so we saw a couple face-offs, right? We saw Kid and Shanks. We saw Garp and Aokiji. We saw Law and Blackbeard. We saw Luffy and Luchi. And we saw Zoro versus Mihawk Seraphim. This arc is about to be fucking crazy. So the intro was just jam-packed with stuff, right? We could do a whole breakdown of the intro. But we're going to start the episode at the end of Luffy's dream episode, right? Where everybody's, everybody's joyful and happy. And um, Robin being, you know, how she is, tells everyone that the last Poneglyph is going to be the hardest to find since no one has found it in all this time, right? The other ones were pretty well known. Kaido had one. Big Mom had one. Stuff like that, right? But... Robin's like, nobody's been able to track this last one, so, and which I'm pretty sure it'll probably be on Elbaf, but who knows, they might throw a curveball at us. But anyways, we cut to Navy headquarters, right? This was Navy headquarters intercepting Sabo's call, right? So then we cut to Big News Morgan, and he's excited with how the world is shaping up, right? He gives us basically a recap with the warlord system, the emperors, the cross guild, the Amazon lily situation, revolutionary army declaring war on the celestial dragons, the assassination of Cobra, and Vivi's missing, right? Then... We cut back to Marijuana, which we haven't been in a while. I mean, just we haven't been there, but whatever. Uh, the five elders find out that Sabo is on the island of Lulucia, right? So the elders say it's his destiny to be on that island. What the fuck does that mean? And first off, like, are we going to find out that there's a dragon? There's a dragon ball. <laughs> there's a devil fruit that can that can tell you destinies? I mean, it's, it's pretty crazy at this point, right? So Sa Sabo called the Revolutionary Army, risking, you know, his... His um his position to tell everybody and to clarify the dragon most of all that he didn't kill Cobra. Now, I'm sure everybody knows this and everybody knew it, but it was just something that they had to be they had to be sure of, right? So we see a tall, dark, mysterious figure. Now, if you remember, this figure was pointed out to us, and it's Emu. So now we know this character is gonna have some kind of power that is very ominous, right? So we cut back to Lulucia and we see a big dark cloud f uh, fall over it, right? The townspeople are like, oh my God, we see something in the sky. It's not just clouds. So we start to hear some intense music for the mysterious character. You know how in animes, like to make somebody even more ominous or more mysterious or more dangerous, they'll add like a little soundtrack behind them. That's what happened with this, right? So then we got this music and stuff and Sabo starts to talk about the events of the reverie, right? So... One of the uh, elders tells a Navy person, stop listening into the call into which he obliges. He says, you're an el you know, you're one of the elders. I got to listen. And Sabo says the empty throne where no one should be sitting since there's no king of the world. Dot, dot, dot. Then we cut to seeing Lul... I, was, I like, I want to say it like the wrong way. Lulucia on a map and a red X uh, in pink comes over it, right? So we cut back to Lulucia with a weird green hue over the town with the elder speaking saying, you didn't trace any calls. Basically trying to scrub the events of their intercept from everybody saying, look, that never happened. I don't know what you're talking about. We, we don't even know where Sabo is. We've never heard of Lulucia, right? He says there was never a kingdom of Lulucia in the first place. So red beams, like we cut back to uh, to the town and red beams start to fall over the sky, destroying 
everything in their path. Sabo's communications go out. And now there's a hole where the island used to be. So we just get Sabo back. And now we're already worried about... I don't... This this arc is going to be so fucking wild. But anyways, any, anyways, we go a few days later and we see the Sunny flying through the air. As it, as it tends to do, right? And Luffy is enjoying himself while most of the others are panicked. Like, everybody else is like, furl the sails, do this, do this. And, you know, Luffy is sitting on top of the Sunny just smiling and laughing. And, I mean, also Zoro, of course, because he's like, um, I don't care. Like, it's, it's ice. We see what gets called the Neptunian, which was just a huge fish being thrown across, thrown across the water like it was nothing, right? So Zoro and Sanji start fighting while trying to help furl the sails and this and this and this right so then we cut to inside of the kitchen and robin's just chilling reading chopper starts to put on his big coat and he starts to say yeah i'm about to go help him out right so they stumble upon something called that jimbe calls rather the big warm eddy now it's a mass of water that was heated up and for some reason it was forced upwards i think we all know the reason i think the events that happened a few days earlier caused this right so luffy spots somebody in the water Zoro, of course, offers to cut the water. He's cutting everything. Don't don't show Zoro fruit ninja or else he's going to cut the phone with the fruits. It's he's just cutting. Uh, so Chopper comes out and almost gets swept away. Luffy saves him. But he gets swept away as well. And who is stuck in the water? Jewelry Bonnie. We haven't seen her in a hot minute. Bonnie says something's in the water, so Usopp spots it and he takes off running like he could get anywhere. But Zoro gets ready, like, you know, we see we see the montage of people doing what they do, you know, Nami scared, you know, uh, Frankie getting ready, Brooke getting ready, Jinbei getting ready, like, all the people that are going to fight are getting ready, right? Uh, and it's a big shark the size of, like, an island about to swallow the Sunny. So, I mean, obviously we know this isn't the end of One Piece, but how do they get out of this? I guess we'll find out next week. So, I'm not going to do reviews on the preview anymore. I kind of don't want to spoil it because I felt like... The last couple of reviews on the preview I did, I kind of just pointed out, I'm like, oh yeah, that's going to happen. And then it would happen and I'll be like, and I would have to spend like two minutes talking about I told you so. But anyways, that's the episode. This episode, I'd probably give it like a eight just because, just because of everything that was happening. Maybe even 8.5 just because the new anime, the new, um, the new intro animation was like wacky, but that's cool because, you know, we got gear five, so we got to get used to some wackiness. Um, the song was all right. The outro also had new stuff and it was pretty good um because i skipped to the thing whatever um but yeah i'd probably give it like an eight uh eight and a half i'm ready i'm ready i'm excited to see what's happening next um i definitely think egghead is going to be one of the most fun arcs i don't know just like the intro gave me a lot of like excitement for what's ahead because after being so serious in wano for the last you know what is it four years i think we all need and deserve some fucking fun time but anyways, that's it. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Be safe and well on your travels. Enjoy the journey. And just know, I will be the king of YouTube. Peace.